guys, that phrase burst on the scene tends to be overused, but you guys really did burst on the scene. I mean, nobody expects a first album like that to just blow out of the gate like it did and all those yeah. hit singles and headlining stadium tours. What do you remember most about that time? <laughs> Very little, because it was so long ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Very little because I, well, you know, uh, I lost a lot of that. Yeah. <laughs> it was all happening pretty fast, so yeah. um, it's hard to sort of focus on any given thing at a time. But um, yeah, it was it was great to to suddenly see it really take off in a big way overnight. Well, well from an outside perspective, it seems like a dream job. You know, the work in the stadiums, yeah. uh, going around doing that. But from what, I, what I've read, it's more like being in a meat processing plant where you guys are packaged and produced yeah. and shipped out and sold uh, by people who care very little about your personal feelings but want to know how much money you can make for them. Is well, that I'm sure that goes on too. I mean, I think you have to understand when something moves that fast, you're so involved with what's going on, you don't actually appreciate appreciate it and live it mm -hmm. you only appreciate it when it's finished right you right. can look back you right. know so mm -hmm. it's very very fast and obviously you're trying to keep all the ends and everything together and mm -hmm. it takes time and uh, it's a lot of hard work and obviously you're trying to protect your art and the business and what you're doing and the band and the way it looks and performs so it's very difficult and you can't appreciate it as you're doing mm -hmm. it. as I said there's too much going on far too much there's, there's, a, there's no attention to individual personalities right. when that happens. You become part of a machine. You know, the, you're right, the sausage factory does come into it, and the machine demands that you produce more of the same. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened with, with, with us. Uh, we were looked on as the, kind of the next big thing the next year. Well, Asia also grew up with MTV. You guys kind of we came did, into yeah. the cradle yeah. together. Yeah. We're, we're the, so you're a musician, you're working hard at your craft. Suddenly, you're supposed to be an actor and do this and that. Was, was that a hard transition? Because you guys seem to have some success with uh, it. it was pretty, well, we had a lot of people helping us with the videos. And plus, David Geffen was a big help mm -hmm. at the front of all of this. You know, mm -hmm. he did... Um, he did reinforce everything for us, and he did help MTV, mm -hmm. that situation. And uh, it was Godly and Cream that were involved with us with those uh, videos. 10CC, yeah, 10CC yeah, okay, yeah. guys. Okay. And uh, it, was a, it was a great relationship, and it worked really well, you know. Mm -hmm. did, did you have any input on what was going into the videos, or were you no. just... Did you want any input on what was going on? Not really. It, it's, it's costly more, business. You generally know. speaking, it's an afterthought. You know, we, we were concentrating on the music, and I think that was the, you know, 99% of our input was put into making that first album. I think the videos are something that, that were tagged on afterwards. At the I time. Think you, you choose the guys that are going to do it, mm -hmm. and you trust them. Right. So right. obviously they're not going to ask you to do something that you don't want to do. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, so that, that's an element of trust there. Yeah. I mean, it, takes you six, it took us six months to record an album and one day to shoot a video. You know, that's the sort of proportion. Yeah. Of, and you'll be uh, remembered so. for the video, not right. The right. Well, now, you, you guys were a people's band right out of the gate. Everybody loved you. The critics, they don't like things that sell a lot of copies. So you were, <laughs> do, do you pay attention to that? Do you say, uh, you know? Uh, I personally don't. It's okay. the public that makes the, the decision, get, you know. We get the last laugh on that Exactly, one. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think the, the people out there are the ones that really you want to listen to, you know, they're the, they're the people who, who speak, you know, they speak for the nation, it's not really the journalists or the media people that really, uh, you know, the fact was American radio was so much behind us on that first album, that, yeah. that was important for us. Um, well, the people, the yeah. people, you know, they the voted for it. The, yeah, the people, mm -hmm. in, it was the right time, but the people really wanted that type of music and wanted it in that format. Mm -hmm. And we were coupled with MTV, so. Well, you, well, now we talk about the level of musicianship. You know when you're joining a band with a Steve Howe or a Carl Palmer or John Wetton or Jeff Downs, you know that the level is going to be up here. Does, does that get to be a daunting test? you ever feel like, God, I wish I were playing with a bunch of lunkheads doing Louis Louis in a wedding no, band somewhere. No, 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 sorry. No, you no, like no. the challenge? Yeah, yeah. I yeah, think it's good to use your, use your musical ability to enhance a situation, not to make mm -hmm. it the main thing, you know. Okay. And we've never thought of it that way. We just do what we do and make it work. I mm -hmm. mean, it's basically, if somebody's good at something, that's fine, but it's not the main reason, you know, for doing what you do. You want to be involved with creating a sound, music and whatever, and if your expertise can enhance that situation, mm -hmm. you want to bring it in and say, hey, this could be done, that could be done. And I think that's what it's all about. We've never called ourselves a super group, right. and we've never gone after the big musicianship type tag that's always been placed on us it's nice but it's not our you know main thing really it's remarkable actually that four people with individual uh, abilities that 
like us actually sound like a band. Right, yeah. right. But, and, it, and that's the unique thing about this. Well, now, John, you and I talked a little earlier about yeah. this. So it's out on the record. You're going through this clean and sober. So this is yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. like a second go through for you. It is indeed. Is it deja vu all over again? I mean, the. Is it Groundhog Day? No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, no, it's much better this time around, I must say. It's uh, to be able to see things with a clear focus is much better one day at a time. Is it a little easier to work with these days? Um, actually, to tell you the truth, John's pretty much like I very first met him, you know, when mm -hmm. I, and I've known John over 30 years now, so um, there's only a period after I first met him that things sort of went wrong there for, uh, for him. But um, he's like he was when I, you know, like when we were kids, to be honest with you, you know. And as I say, I've known him, I don't know, it must be 35 years, mustn't it? Yeah. You know, so we go back a long, long time. 40 yeah. years. 40 years. I hate to say it. And you have to realise there's something which is very interesting here. When you're together for the first time and doing what we were doing and coming from the bands we came from, you experience a situation like Asia and you think, yes, that's great. It's only when you come back now, 23 year la years later, you realise how good it was, how good the individual mm. people were and how, in an uncanny way, it actually all went together. When the odds were it should not work. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. And it's r only now we can experience it. And thank God we've had got a second Literally. chance. You know, so mm. it's really, it's a, it's a wonderful thing. It, it is. really it, is. It's great. Well, let's talk, let's talk the future. I just heard that Asia is recording a new album. Yeah, yeah. And uh, more of the same. What, what, how is it differing from the early '80s? Well, albums? that's that's what we've got to do. You know, it's a bit early to say. I think. Yeah, yeah. Gangster rap. <laughs> Doubt it. Doubt it. That's probably one thing we won't be doing. Uh, everything else is in the frame. Uh, I've got one of those I'm bringing in, actually, but they don't know they are. <laughs> <laughs> look, look for Carl Palmer's gangster rap. That would be something to hear. We uh, have to do it really for what's, what's best for us. We have you to know. do it our way. Yeah. Okay, it's a kind right. of phrase. <laughs> well, well, how far along are we on no. in the recording? <laughs> How far along are we uh, on the New Asia? When will we see New Asia? Well, we have a new DVD, first of okay. all, which we shouldn't Let's ride over too that. quickly. You know, we've, uh, we've documented the complete show, and that was done earlier this year in Japan. Nice. I think it's about 87 minutes worth of uh, film, and uh, it covers the whole of that first album mm -hmm. and lots of other bits and pieces on top. So that'll come out in September. And between now and then, uh, between now and the end of the year, we'll work on new material and whatever's got to be done in regard to a new album you know it's going to be early next year yeah. isn't it? Really? okay yeah. great okay well i know you guys are busy we got a lot to do we got a show tonight catch asia out on the road if you get a chance the new live dvd is out be looking for new asia at the beginning of next year guys thanks for being here yeah, thank you thank you